Hi everyone! Today, I'll show you how I've recently made a coat from scratch that's inspired by what I think is a Christian Dior coat from 1958. To be honest, before I decided to make this coat, I was thinking just to get a coat from the high street. But then I came across the picture of this one. It was, still is, so beautiful. It was elegant and pretty minimal too. At the same time, it had those bows on the front that added this femininity and interest to it. It was the combination of styles that I've always looked for. Minimal and cute. I realized that's the code that I've always wanted. I started with pattern making and cutting out fabrics, but I felt like I needed a break, so I decided to have some tea. I recently bought this Chinese flowering tea, as I've seen some pretty pictures of it on my Instagram feed, and I really wanted to try it. It's basically tea leaves wrapped around a flower, and then dried. Once it's in the hot water, the leaves open up again, and the pretty shape shows up. Every pack comes with a different flower combination, so it took me some time actually to decide which one I should go for. I finally picked the one with jasmine and lily flowers, as it sounded like a lovely combination. And I just really like these two in general. I was surprised about the flavour to be honest, I thought it would probably just taste like any other regular green tea or something, but actually it had this beautiful rich taste to it. Now back onto the coat. I'm using a wool blend fabric of cashmere, it's quite dense but not as thick as I like it to be. So if I don't add another layer, it will drape close to my body and won't hold that A-line shape that widens from the top to the bottom. It wouldn't be very warm either. And that's not what I'm going for. That's why I'll be permanently basting in the wool hair canvas that you can see me cutting right now. I didn't go for a glue-on interfacing, even though it's less time consuming. It just doesn't last for a very long time. It comes off pretty soon, or bubbles, where it hasn't stuck properly. No thank you. As long as you have the time, a floating canvas is so worth the time and effort. It also creates a beautiful stiffness and drape that you just don't get with any type of interfacing. In terms of patterns and fit of the coat, I wanted the coat to be made from my body and my proportions. I also wanted to make some changes and slightly deviate from the Christian Dior coat. So I chose not to look for patterns, if there are any out there, but make my own instead. That's why my coat won't be an exact copy of the Christian Dior one, but rather inspired by it.
And of course, I have to add pockets. The first difference between my coat and the Christian Dior coat is that on the original, the hem ends just a bit lower than the knees, just where the calf starts. However, I prefer longer lengths, so my hem will end low on my calf. The second change I've made is that it's not going to be as wide as Christian Dior would have been on me, and it will go in more narrowly at the shoulders to emphasize the coat's A-line. Finishing the buttonholes, I decided to try a milk tea recipe my friend gave me, as well as having some mochis that I previously bought. I always drink black tea with milk the British way, but I've recently been craving the bubble tea shop kind of way. At first, he poured two cups of milk into the pot, then add two teaspoons of black tea leaves. Simmer for five minutes and then add three teaspoons of sugar. I actually forgot to do that and only added after I realized it's not sweet at all. Then turn the heat off and pour the tea through a strainer to the bottle or any other container. When it cools down to a room temperature, refrigerate it for a cool taste. I didn't do the step either and chose to drink it hot this time. In terms of the recipe, this was a lovely one. However, it wasn't the kind of milk tea I was looking for, so I'll just have to keep looking. The third change I've made is to the coat's front pieces. The Christian Dior design was made of one piece of fabric on each side. Each piece did, however, have darts that are two-thirds of the coat's length. These darts separated and emphasized the coat's A-line, and it seemed that it added some shaping to the coat as well. I think if the coat did have pockets, it was probably right there, cleverly added in between the seam of the darts. At least, I would have added them there. However, I chose to make my coat of two separate pieces on one side, and of one piece of fabric on the other. The one that will be made of two patterns will be the top layer, and the seam connecting these two pieces will emphasize the coat's A-line. Because of this change, my pockets will be in the side seam instead. As for the bows, I made a slight change as well. Mine will be thicker. I feel like the super dainty bows might end up looking a bit fussy on me and not suit my body type. The fifth change was to the back. I don't know what was the Dior coat back like, so I went for a simple back made of two pattern pieces that enabled me to add more volume and create a lovely drape and shape at the same time. I think that goes the best with the rest of the design as well. The final change I made is to the sleeves. Mine will be a bit more fitted and will not have the fold around the armhole that often comes with the raglan sleeve. Unlike the Christian Dior sleeves that seem to be made of one piece of fabric, 
and made a tailored two-piece sleeve instead. However, just like in the Christian Dior coat, mine will also have a dart on the top of the arm. It will be shorter though, while still allowing me to add more shaping and to create my desired fit. To finish it off, I'm sewing on my label. 